Hey everybody, sit back and relax, cause it's story time. The backstabbing, gold hoarding, constant stealthing rogue has been around since the first editions of D&D, and has been reworked in design all the way to 5th edition. Originally it was called The Thief, and sorta kinda didn't exist. Hey, that's pretty fitting. What's the origins and story of this mysterious scoundrel? Let's find out in this episode of D&D Class Lore. But before we get started, we gotta give a shout out to our sponsor, World Anvil, the ultimate world building tool for your RPG games. Make interactive world maps with markers and descriptions. I really love making maps in this, it's so fun. Create articles about lore, creatures, or even locations, and share with your players to enhance your campaigns. Get started today with my code, XP to level 3, for 20% off your subscription. There's a link down below. Our story begins in the land before time, 1974. Gary answers a phone call from another Gary. He gives him the concept for a thief class in his brand new game, Dungeons and Dragons, which currently had three classes, fighting man, magic users, and clerics. The thief would be less focused on fighting, wear leather armor, and instead of spells, have a unique set of abilities. These abilities included opening locks or disabling magic locks, removal of traps or poison needles, rapidly climbing sheer surfaces, stealing items via stealth or sleight of hand, strike silently from behind, listen for noise behind a closed door, move with stealth, and hide in shadows. The idea of the thief was written and playtested by Gary Switzer and D. Daniel Wagner, who went on to write the Manual of Arania in 1977, one of the first non-TSR D&D supplements, which included new monsters, classes, and tables for random reincarnation. The legacy of D. Daniel Wagner, building classes like the thief and leprechaun in D&D. In an 1975, The Thief was published as a playable class in the D&D Greyhawk Supplement Book, aka the supplement that gave D&D Paladins, Beholders, Weapon Damage, Gary Gygax being sexist, and its own combat system that completely separated itself from Chainmail. Thieves in D&D could also be any of the available races, because this was back when classes were limited to what race you were. They could also read almost any language, and had a D4 for hit dice. Ah, death. In the advanced Dungeons and Dragons, thieves became one of the core classes in D&D. Any race could play them, their hit dice was improved to a d6, and they leveled up the fastest. However, thieves were pretty limited by having their core abilities, stealthing and lockpicking, having a success of 10 to 20%. It'd be like in 5th edition if your third level rogue can only successfully stealth if they roll a 19 or 20. It wasn't until level 10 when the thieves were actually useful. There was also basic D&D. What's basic D&D, Jacob? It was a box set written by these guys and published by TSR in 1977 as a simpler and more straightforward rule set of D&D. Okay, now we've got the D&D multi-split timeline of Advanced D&D and Basic D&D. Advanced D&D was kind of the standard D&D as it was primarily written by Gary Gygax and Basic D&D, also known as Holmes D&D, also known as BX D&D, also known as Menser D&D, had their own versions. Basic D&D was formatted a lot better, had arguably better design, and it was more straightforward and pioneered the additions today. Guy Gax's writings were, uh kind of rambly, but they set the baseline of what the game was. Basic D&D came with prettier art and overall much more ease for new players to play the game. Thief primarily stayed the same throughout this edition. It's 1989, time for Advanced Dungeons and Dragons 2nd Edition Electric Boogaloo, and it brings forth the Rogue. Rogues are a type of class that can be thieves or bards. Rogues are people who want to amass fortune, and they can do that by either stealing or being a charismatic jack-of-all-trades. Thieves had a bunch of abilities that all had a percentage chance of succeeding. They could stealth, pick pockets, find traps, read languages, cast spell scrolls, detect noises, climb walls, speak thieves can't, a special language only other thieves know, and backstab. Backstab was a new ability that let thieves do more damage. Only if the thief was behind the enemy, the enemy was unaware, and they had a back. Like, an ooze couldn't be backstabbed because they didn't have Backs. I guess that makes logical sense, but it's such a strange mechanic to have for your game. Like, what, you're gonna play a character who hunts for backs? He's always on the prowl. He's coming for your spine. I want to read an excerpt that's actually written in this book. The ogre marches forward down the hallway, peering into the gloom ahead. He fails to notice the shadowy form of Ragnar the Thief hidden in an alcove. Slipping into the hallway, Ragnar creeps up behind the monster. As he sets himself to strike a mortal blow, 
His foot scrapes across the stone. The hairy ears of the ogre perk up. The beast whirls around, ruining Ragnar's chance for a backstab and what remains of his day. If Ragnar had made a successful roll to move silently, he could have attacked the ogre with a plus four bonus on his chance to hit and inflicted five times his normal damage since he is 15th level. <laughs> Just make a description where he hits. Why did you do my boy Ragnar so dirty? Bards were an optional class for rogues if your DM allowed it. We'll go over bards in a different video as these abilities were reworked later and don't have much to do with our current rogue. Second edition also had the complete thief's handbook written by John Nephew, Carl Sargent, and Douglas Niles, which, to summarize, is a book that provides detailed information for Thief characters and to DMs running campaigns including Thieves. John, Carl, and Douglas's Guide to Thieves. This book came with numerous things including new Thief types like the Spy and Scout. Spies are more proficient in stealthing and lockpicking, while Scouts are skirmisher troops that notice ambushes and study terrain. Oh, also, it came with acrobats, adventurers, assassins, bandits, beggars, bounty hunters, Buccaneers, which had a rope balancing mechanic baked in, burglar, cat purse, fence, investigator, smuggler, swashbuckler, swindler, thug, and the troubleshooter. Which, by the way, is not the rogue who knows Windows 95 super well. This is a rogue who works against thieves by using their own abilities. But unlike the investigator, which does this exactly, the troubleshooter is a security consultant who fixes problems thieves cause. They literally mention Murphy's Law and how troubleshooters capitalize on this law. So, what do they do? Uh, whatever they want. Literally, it says this is difficult to make into a game mechanic and the DM should just wing it. Oh my god. Also, there's this flavor text on Geraldor the Rogue. Okay, not trying to knack this thing too hard. It honestly has some good concepts and really interesting ideas for rogues that were later used and played out in later editions. Mostly 5th edition. But they really just picked every synonym for thief and tried to make an idea out of it, didn't they? It's time for 3rd edition. TSR is gone, and D&D is owned by Hasbro and Wizards of the Coast. 3rd edition was published in 2000, and the thief is no more. The class is now renamed to the rogue. 3rd edition was published and then rewritten into 3.5, which is what is more widely known today. There's not a whole lot of differences, between the two of them, and it mostly acted as a dev update to the game. Rogues were completely unchanged. Rogues in 3.5 still follow the same set of ideas. They sneak, they steal, they climb, and they are really strong, like wow. Backstab is now sneak attack and deals different d6s of damage if the target is flat-footed. Flat-footed was a condition and armor class all creatures had. In 3.5, everybody had like three armor classes and they all meant different things. You had your basic AC, which is how hard it is to hit you with dexterity and armor. You had touch AC, which removed your armor bonus and was just how easy it was to touch you, and you had flat-footed. This is basically your surprised AC, and you didn't add your dexterity as you couldn't dodge, but you could still add your armor because, you know, armor. So rogues got that extra damage if they surprised their enemies by attacking their flat-footed AC, which was done by hiding. Rogues also had lots of skill proficiencies, and I legit think wizards were trying to adapt the rogue into this new system and saw the three stooges over here making 400 rogue classes and said, screw it, give them every skill. Rogues also gained skills like evasion, where on a successful reflex save, the rogue can take zero damage instead of half from spells like fireball. They also also gained abilities like trap finding and trap sense, where they could gain a bonus on dodging traps and was the only class that could use the search skill to locate traps. Also, rogues are no longer limited to any races. None of the classes are, which is amazing. There's even a blurb in here talking about what influence your race would have on your class. Humans and half elves being typical rogues, dwarves and gnomes being experts with locks and traps, and half orcs. Uh, the 3.5 DM's guide also had prestige classes. These are classes that you can work towards and meet a certain prerequisite to then start taking levels in this class. Two of note were the assassin and arcane trickster. To become an assassin, you needed to meet three prerequisites. You needed to be evil, have four ranks in disguise, eight ranks in hide, and eight ranks in move silently. Yeah, 3.5 had a lot of weird skills. They also must kill someone for no other reason than to join the assassins. 
<laughs> okay. If you did this, you became an assassin and gained spells, the ability to use poisons, and death strike, where you could study someone for three rounds, and if you pulled it off, you could instantly kill them, so long as the target failed a fortitude save. And if they succeeded the fortitude save, they were just paralyzed for 1d6 rounds. Assassins could instantly kill anything they stared at for 18 seconds. Okay, yeah, all right. Arcane tricksters needed to be non-lawful, have the ability to cast Mage Hand, have ranks in a bunch of skills, and sneak attack up to 2d6. They then gain the ability to cast spells, use their Mage Hand to unlock traps and doors from a distance, and they could sneak attack more than once per turn. Prestige classes were a great way to flavor your character in 3.5 and would become the precursor to subclasses in 5e. In 2008, D&D 4th edition was released. Conceptually, the rogue was still the cunning, elusive, stabby stealth class, but wizards decided that D&D is a weird video game now, and 4th edition abilities are wrapped into these powers. Everything we just learned about the rogue for the past 10 minutes was mostly thrown out the window and reimagined for 4th edition. The game now plays with rogues being a type of class called a striker. They deal damage. Now, you normally don't want two strikers in a party, so if you're playing a rogue, you're the only one dealing damage, really. Then you choose your path that you want your rogue to be. Trickster Rogue, similar to the Thief, being elusive and cunning, and Brawny Rogue, brutal and all about being strong. All rogues got four basic abilities. First Strike, which gives you combat advantage on anyone who hasn't acted yet. This is the shadow of Flatfooted. Rogue Tactics, get a bonus to AC or a bonus to sneak attack damage. Rogue Weapon Talent, be better at daggers or shurikens. And Sneak Attack, whenever you have combat advantage, you gain extra damage. Rogues can get combat advantage by attacking anyone who hasn't acted yet, or when anyone is Balancing, blinded, climbing, dazed, flanked by the attacker, helpless, prone, restrained, running, squeezing, stunned, surprised, unable to see the attacker, unaware of you, or unconscious. Then you picked your exploits. Exploits slash powers were divided between their recharge, at will, per encounter, and daily. They were also divided among your level. Also, they were divided among paragon paths. Paragon paths are somewhat like prestige classes. They were more ways to flavor up your rogue and give them unique exploits. You had four of them. Cat Burglar, Dagger Master, Master Infill Trader, and Shadow Assassin. We're, uh, we're just gonna ignore all this. We're just gonna ignore all of it. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, all right, okay. If Wizards would have rebranded 4th edition not as D&D, but as its own game, it probably would have sold better. All the different rogue exploits at your choice included... Death Strike, Piercing Strike, or Plus Strike, Sky Fighters, Dazing Strike, 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 the game goes back to being itself after its World of Warcraft phase, and 5e rogues are now more built like the 3.5 classes. Once again, the rogue kept its concept ever since the Thief in 1st edition. You get set abilities based on your level, and you can choose a subclass, much like a prestige class, except you don't have to meet any prerequisites, and you get it at 3rd level. This subclass grants you different abilities at different levels, allowing rogues to have multiple paths of development. Instead of having ranks in skills, you gained proficiency, which added a flat number to any of the much more streamlined skills. And a rogues get a lot of them, including expertise, allowing you to get double proficiency in any two skills. Ah, the aftershocks of the troubleshooter are still felt today. Also, rogues are now the chunkiest they've ever been with a d8 to hit dice. You also get thieves can't and sneak attack. Now, instead of having combat advantage, you need just advantage, which you can also gain in a multitude of ways in 5e, except now it's much more freeform and kind of up to the DM. You also gain your sneak attack if an ally is within 5 feet of your target, hearkening back to the backstab. Cutting action now allows rogues to dash, disengage, or hide as bonus actions on their turn, allowing them to be more agile, and picking from their three archetypes, Thief, Assassin, and Arcane Trickster. Thief lets you disarm traps or open locks quickly. You can climb walls, gain advantage on stealth if you move slowly, and use magic items like scrolls, without any requirements. Thief in 5th edition plays on the original concept laid out in 1st edition D&D. It's really great game design that wizards were able to keep the original concept of the Thief in their newest edition. Ragnar lives on in our hearts. Assassins are based off the prestige class from earlier and balance out the whole death strike thing. Arcane tricksters also make a return and keep to the same idea that was laid on in the prestige class in 3.5. There's lots of other subclasses for Rogue released in other books for 5th edition, many of them playing on the original ideas from the Thief Guide. Rogues were a basic concept added to 1st edition that obviously stuck for a very long time. Many characters have been played through Rogue and it goes down as one of the most iconic classes for D&D. Just to show you that your ideas 
business can leave an impact and be something very worthwhile to many people. But in its whole, that's the lore and history of the rogue. Thanks for watching this video. I actually did a whole lot of research and work for this video. I wanted to do justice to the class and game, and I hope that was achieved. Hope you enjoyed it, and that's the end of the video.